another testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. We are back. Uh, it is good to be back. Uh, we're going to follow this show up with another show on a New Age Masterclass performance. Uh, but let's get it. Before we get into the Charlo, um, Charlo's performance, which is really good, um, please like and subscribe, share on all forms of social media. Brand new channel, Texas Boxing Scene, where all proceeds go to autism research and recovery. Please subscribe to Texas Boxing Scene. Um, like I said, it goes to a, a great cause that's near and dear to our hearts. Um, but let's get into this fight. Um, I, I was a lone wolf in saying I thought my TL was – I was a lone wolf in saying my TL was going to lose. I, I think everyone thought he was going to lose. But um, saying that I thought he was a, a, a tough, rugged, decent opponent. And um, that certainly proved to be the case. Um, he came in, he actually, I thought did well the last three, four rounds, four rounds of the fight. I thought he won two of them. I had it 10 rounds to two, um, granite chin, you know, it, 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 it got good power. You know, every time he hit Charlo, which, you know, was not nearly as often as he got hit, but he landed clean shots. You can see that Charlo, um, the combination of, Landing every shot, you know, hitting him with everything and eating some shots really started to weigh him down. You saw Charlo's body language change there in 9, 10, 11. He, he stopped coming forward altogether. And he, look, he was still winning round. He was still doing fine. Uh, it was a really good performance by Charlo. But I, I, I want to get into Montiel on, on, on how good the performance was. Like, it was a really good performance. It's a really good performance but for Montiel. Uh, he'll, he'll, we'll, we'll see him again. I, I Look, he's not going to be a world champion. You know, he's flawed. He's sloppy. He gets hit a lot. Um, he's very, very painfully slow. Um, but that being said, for what he is, he's a decent fighter. And, and that's what I was saying. Go back. You can listen to the other episode. I picked him to get stopped in 10. He went the distance. Um, so kudos to him. Uh, but let's get into Charlo now. Charlo's performance is good. You know, he did what he was supposed to do. He did everything but get him out. Uh, the first eight rounds of that fight was one-sided. It looked like in round six, seven, he may get him out, but Montiel was so tough. Montiel had some big shots that kept coming forward. Uh, but Charlo was treating, treating him like target practice for, for most, of, you know, most of the fight. He was eating some shots, um, but, I mean, he's out landing a three to one, four to one. Really accurate pinpoint, good combinations. Uh, he looked sharp. He looked strong. It, there's not much you can criticize um, in Charles' performance, especially through the first eight rounds. It was it was great. It was a really really excellent performance. Um, yeah, I, I thought I thought he did well. I, I thought um, you know he did everything he was supposed to do. Uh, I thought the combination work was good. I thought. The, he, he using the ring well. He was coming forward, especially the first couple of rounds. Montiel was going backwards, which he can't do. Uh, so when he had Montiel going backwards, he was doing something right. Uh, Montiel did look a little starstruck. Uh, like the stage may be a little bit too big for him, especially early. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, Charlo did everything he could except get him out, which, you know, it, it looked like Charlo had some opportunities to get him out. And, and, and contrary to popular belief, I, I think Charlo – you know, contrary to popular opinion, I, I actually think Charlo is a terrible finisher. I think he gets way sloppy. Um, I, I, I think he gets over-aggressive, over-excited, and, and I guess a top-notch fighter, if he gets him hurt, he does that. He could get countered and tagged and dropped himself. Um, but, look, I don't want to take away from Charlo's performance. I, I don't think Charles, Charles is a particularly good finisher. Um, I, I think um, the performance was, was great, A-minus performance, I would say. You know, um, I would say it was an A through eight rounds. The only thing he didn't do was get him out, so I'll give him an A minus. It, it was good. Um, where does he go from here? You know, the, it's the same reoccurring issue with Jamal Charlo. Um, 
he can't seem to get a fight with the big names. Um, best bet is he goes to 68 and Caleb Plant beats Canelo and he fights Caleb Plant for the undisputed 168-pound belt. Uh, or he fights Jacobs at 168. But his fights at 168, does he want to go to 168? I don't know. Oscar De La Hoya wants to put him in with Munguia. It's an interesting fight. I, I'd be okay with him fighting Munguia. I would be fine with that fight. Um, he, you know, he would destroy Munguia. It might look similar to this, but it's a decent fight. You know, the, the Andre fight, this fight's for him, but just for whatever reason, they aren't getting me. I, I'm, I'm not here. I'm not going to blame anyone. I, I'm not part of the negotiating table. I'm not there. I don't know. For some reason, he's taking these kind of B-level fights, and I don't think Montiel's a bum. I, I did a whole show on how I don't think Montiel's a pushover, and he proved not to be a pushover. Really tough guy, excellent fighter. Good fighter. Excellent chin, excellent durability, excellent power. You know, pretty decent fighter um, who can make noise in this division, although he'll never win a world title, I don't think. Um, although, <laughs> some of the who win world titles. Um, yeah, you bank is on the table. That fight doesn't move the needle for me. You know, I, I don't really know where he goes. You know, he wants Triple G. He wants Andre. He obviously wants Canelo. He'll fight J He'll fight anyway, except I'm not sure why these fights aren't getting made. Um, but again, I don't want to ruin Charles' performance. It was an excellent performance. He takes the, the victory home to H Town. Um, he looked sharp. He looked good. He was pinpoint accurate for most of the fight. He was moving well. Beautiful combinations. Really, really good stuff from from Jamal Charlo. Um, yeah, I think he makes his claim as the best middleweight in the world. You know, Canelo's not in that division anymore, so it's kind of open. You know, it's him. It's Billy Joe. I mean, those are really the names. Laura. Does he fight Laura? What do you guys think? But I mean, I know that they're they're close. They're friendly. I can't see that fight being made. I don't know. They're the same camp. I can't see that being made, so I, I don't know. Um, let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Uh like, subscribe, and also check out our new, uh, um, you know, because Laura is in the middle of it. Check out our new channel, Texas Boxing Scene, for all things Texas boxing. Uh, all proceeds go to autism research and recovery. Um, like and subscribe to that channel. Please hit the, the thumbs up, share this channel. Um, it is June 19th, Juneteenth, 2021, um, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.